All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to a new episode of Andy Talks Japandi. In today's episode, guys, we're going to be talking about what foods from Japan do I miss that I can't get in America? And this question comes from Dustin of the Solo Travel Blog and Japan Questions Answer channel. Big shout out to him. Uh, definitely check out his stuff as well. So I got these listed. These are in no particular order. With that said, let's get right into it. And one of the things that I miss food wise is the Japanese chains like Most Burger and America House. Um, I was really big into burgers because you know me, Mr. America Gin, gotta get my hamburger on, right? But I really love chains like Most Burger, uh, Freshest Burger is another good one. And America House, I didn't even know they were a chain until years later. I just would usually go out to the one in Yokohama. They got some good stuff there, not gonna lie. And it's always super fresh. Uh, the burgers at Most Burger aren't that good, but the fries, definitely amazing, and they're always fresh. And with Freshest Burger, I think their burgers are a lot better, but they don't let you customize anything, so you pretty much have to get it as is. So if you're particular about like no onions, no pickles, whatever, or you wanna add something, it's not really something you can do at Freshest Burger. And so another food that I miss in, from Japan are my local burger shops, uh, like the one in Yokosuka in my neighborhood, uh, Snug State Door Cafe, which I've heard has recently reopened after two years of being closed. And I'm really excited and I'm really hoping my friends can make it down there and really see like what I was talking about. Cause like I'm a big fan of that restaurant. I've done a video on it, be sure to check it out in the Andy Japandi playlist and I'm hoping that the store gets a lot more coverage and that they too can enjoy the same burgers that I had. And so another food that I miss out in Japan, oddly enough, are the, over there, be the foreign foods. So, you know, franchises like McDonald's, Burger King, Domino's, stuff like that. Which is kind of weird because we have those in mass out here in America, but why would I miss the ones in Japan? Well, for one, the ones in Japan have you know, some different promotional items, which can be pretty interesting. And also just the quality of the food and the attention to detail and everything is much better out in Japan versus in America, where sometimes I feel like they kind of just slap some stuff together and just throw it in a bag and just like hand it to you. It can be very mechanical getting fast food here in the States, whereas in Japan, it's very nice and it feels like you're at a nice little sit down restaurant. It's really cool. And I really love the attention to detail and the freshness of the food. Another food that I miss is from my local ramen shop in Yokosuka, as well as just the sheer amount of ramen that's plentifully available in Japan. Not just in the shops, but also instant ramen, cup noodle type stuff. Those are even like way better made than the stuff you find here in the States, which is usually just like block of noodles and some MSG filled packet of who knows what that just kind of gets you by. Basically like flavored cardboard. But uh, the stuff in Japan has different packets. They got packets for like dried vegetables. They got one for the seasoning, one for the fat, and you just mix it up and it's so freaking good. And of course, if you get it from the shops, it's even better because it's fresh. And you can usually pair it with a beer for 10 spotter, Isen Yen. It's actually about 950 USD. And you have yourself a really good meal at a pretty competitive price, all things considered. And I really miss those a lot. And of course, another food that I miss, especially since I lived out in Yokosuka, is all the curry restaurants out there. Now, every city, town is usually known for something particular, whether it's a particular food or like a plant or a tree or something like that. And Yokosuka is primarily known for curry. And there's just a huge, plentiful amount of curry shops out in Yokosuka. There's even curry festivals that occur around summertime. So if you're out in the Yokosuka slash Kanagawa area, I recommend you check those out. Give the good old Kaigun curry, Navy curry a try. And if you're looking for something a little more flavorful, as far as like depth of flavor and things like that, there's plenty of Indian style curry restaurants out there as well. And so another thing I miss, bottled tea. I can technically get these from the import shops, but at the import shops, they usually cost about like five bucks 
for like a two liter. I could get them at like Donkey, Don Quixote, or like a Kambini or something like that for maybe like a buck, two bucks at the most. Especially in the summertime, I would just get like a friggin' jug of jasmine green tea, which is my all time fave. Just throw that thing in the fridge, get it nice and cold and just chug it down. Nothing better on a hot summer day, let me tell you what. And speaking of beverages, I think this will get me on a whole like tangent of different beverages that I miss. So I have a whole list of them here. Another thing that I miss is canned coffee. As you guys know, Japan is plentiful with their uh, vending machines. <laughs> I think it was, what was it, like one vending machine per 13 people or something like that. And in a lot of these vending machines, they have canned coffee. And you can also pick these up at convenience stores, the convenies. Uh, you can also get them at department stores as well, which is a lot cheaper. So if you're looking to get your canned coffee on the cheap, definitely recommend you check out the uh, canned coffee in the stores. A lot of times you can get like a little six pack or whatever, and that's about like half the cost of what it would be if you got six cans of the same exact coffee from the vending machines. So if you're pinching pennies and you still need your uh, canned coffee fix, definitely recommend doing it that way. And there's just so many different varieties. You can get uh, black coffee, which is usually the cheapest and my personal favorite because it tastes so dang good. And it's not like super acidic, so it doesn't like completely tear my stomach up. When I came back to the States and tried drinking black coffee, it would just like tear my stomach up and I'd be feeling like crap all day. Uh, but over there, it definitely does have that acidic bite, but it doesn't like mess up my stomach at all. And another beverage that I miss out in Japan is Mitsuya Cider. It's kind of like their version of like Sprite or 7-Up. To me, it's kind of like kind of a mixture of the two. Like it has the nice refreshing snap of Sprite, but also has kind of the deep flavor of 7-Up. So it's kind of a weird in between and it's really good. And it's especially good on a bad stomach. So if you drink a lot the night before and your stomach's kind of flippy floppy, or you drank too much coffee <laughs> and your stomach's a little flippy floppy, a good little bottle or whatever of Mitsuya cider will do you good. And another beverage I miss so dearly is match. And I'd usually get this out when I was uh, playing in the arcades. They'd usually have a little vending machine. You'd get match soda out there. And I just associate it with memories of just like Having a bottle of match on the side while I'm playing some video games, got my little pocket of coins and stuff off to the side, just throwing in coins and just sipping on some match. And just, you know, such good memories, you know, whether I was out and about in Akihabara or even just locally in Yokosuka, going to Plaza Capcom, playing the fighting games, it's usually where I was at. Ah, brings back so many good memories. It fills me with the with the natsukashi, as it were. Moving on to the more adult beverages that I miss. Canned chuhai. You can also get beer and stuff like that out in Japan, but it's okay. It's really nothing to write home about. Some beers that I like would be Kirin. That's kind of the standard basic beer. Nothing really super remarkable. You know, just kind of a regular beer. I guess this is the best way I can describe it. You know, it's not bad, but it's not particularly remarkable either. It's usually something I kind of pair with a lot of foods or just kind of as an in-between when I'm drinking some chuhai. Another one I like uh, is the Sapporo White Belge in particular. The regular Sapporo is, eh, it's a favorite a lot, but I'm not particularly uh, fond of it. But the White Belge, definitely got to check that out. That's, that's actually one of my favorite beers from out in Japan. But Getting back to the canned chuhai. Chuhai, for those who don't know, is basically like, a, like kind of like a wine cooler, sort of. It's short for sochu highball. So the combination of sochu, which is like rice wine, uh, it can also be made with potatoes and other things, but it's primarily rice and mixture of like club soda and usually like a fruit syrup or juice. So usually at the convenience stores, the common flavors would be like lemon, lime, and grapefruit. Uh, they also have uh, seasonal flavors as well. So if you get it during the summertime, you can get like a cherry flavored one. Uh, during the summer, they usually have like green apple or pineapple, which those are two of my favorites right there. For me, I prefer the strong type of chuhai. They also have the strong zeros out there, which have a wider selection of flavors. But those always tend to give me a headache, so I usually stick with the Kirin Strongs. 
Those usually got me pretty drunk at a very reasonable price. And they tasted pretty good too. Like you'd be slamming them, you're not really feeling it until like the second or third one in, it's like, oh. So definitely a good tip for you guys who like to go out clubbing because the drinks at the bar and stuff can get pretty pricey, especially if you're clubbing out in Rapungi or elsewhere in Tokyo. So definitely recommend picking up a couple chew high at the local Kabini, get your pregame on, and then just hitting up the clubs so you don't have to drink as much at the club. Save you a little coin. And so moving on to uh, other foods I miss, speaking of kombinis, actually, one of the foods I miss a lot is the kombini bento. So usually I would get like the tonkatsu curry bento. It was just like so freaking good. And you can get it heated at the uh, convenience store or what I'd usually do is just heat it at home because I didn't want it to get cold on my way home. And it's just like really good, really filling. And it pairs really nicely with a can of cold chew high. Let me tell you what. And moving on to more kombini foods that I miss. Onigiri, which is the little rice balls. So you can get it with just the rice and like a filling, or you can get it traditionally wrapped with uh, some seaweed. Didn't really bother me with the seaweed, but uh, usually I'd get like ones that are filled with like tuna. That was like my kind of my go-to flavor. But then I'd kind of mix it up and get some other ingredients as well. But usually like the tuna filled ones were like my go-to. Those would make for a really good breakfast actually. And I'd also pair it with the other food that I miss so much from Japan is anpan or uh, like red bean paste filled little bread that you get at convenience stores. Now, a lot of people probably know like melon pon, like a cream filled bread bun, and it's like coated with uh, like melon juice and stuff like that. So it tastes like a melon. Uh, I had those before, but for me personally, I find them a little too sugary. So I usually like to stick with the on pon. And sometimes you can get them with the uh, like roasted uh, sesame seeds on top, which adds a nice deeper, more earthy flavor to it. You just can't beat a good Anpan, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, Anpan, man. That's kind of uh, my go-to as far as breakfast goes. You know, switching between Anpan and Onigiri and a nice can of coffee. You know, it's definitely my breakfast choice when uh, I was living abroad in Japan. So guys, if you've lived abroad in Japan or elsewhere in the world, uh, let me know in the comments down below in the boobity boops, what are some foods and beverages that you miss from your time living abroad? And with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sun. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.